you don't want to be in it? No, I don't think you want me to be in it. I was going to say, I could, I could come over there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody good? Sarah, you guys have a story about that number, man? Well, Matt will take some questions now. So we'll yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you want to lead off with that? Uh, not really. Um, I was 65 in college, and when I when I got to, to the NFL, um, Lou Vasquez played with in Denver, had 65. I was like, well, I'm not getting that one. You know, he's a – Played however seven years or something. So um, one of my best friends in college was 61. So it kind of meant a lot to me to stick with a number that was a good friend of mine, and just been with it ever since. And it grew on me, and I'm stuck with it. So Matt, what was this process like for you? Um, how did you land with the Panthers? Kind of heard some chatter that other teams might have been interested, but this is where you wanted to come. Yeah, I mean, uh, free agency is a, this is my first time in free agency. Is a very intriguing process um but you know that throughout it all you talk to all the different teams and we decided the Panthers were the best fit with with what I want out of a team and when it comes to winning and and the culture and the continuity and and so it was a it was a no-brainer I believe I, I saw on social media that you were looking forward to Filling the shoes of, or trying to fill the shoes of Ryan Cleo says a guy that you would watch tape of and, and learn from. Yeah. Um, how can I guess maybe watching him over the years help you maybe, maybe a quicker transition as far as you know chemistry uh, with you know say you know whoever's an under quarterback most likely of course can. Yeah. No, I mean he's he's been a phenomenal player for a long time. A uh, guy that's that's uh, always done it the right way and and I've watched film on him. You know we all all the. I think all the good alignment in the league, you pay attention to the other lines and, and who's good and, and you try to pick up things from him. And he's always been one that one of the main guys that I tried to model my game after. And, and uh, I think, you know, that's, that's all been done already. You know, I'm not going to change my game now. Um, but um, being able to learn from him and, you know, go back and watch tape of him now even more will be very helpful to me going forward, I believe. What set him apart and what sets you apart? Um, I mean, first off, just I mean how long he played like that's that's pretty amazing. Um, and the and the level he was able to do it. I know he's a very tough player. He had to battle some injuries throughout, but um, you know I'm I don't I'm not going to get into like specific differences. Um, I try to bring a lot of the stuff that he brought, the same type of leadership and and uh, hard work and toughness. And now, what do you think it takes for an offensive lineman to be a leader in the locker room? I think the first first and most important thing is lead by example. Um, you have to be putting that that uh, work in, and, and people have to see that. And uh, I think that's the most important. After that, then you're you're kind of you're playing the game of 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 bringing everyone along with you and holding people accountable the right way. Not you know that doesn't mean you're yelling at people or whatever. And whatever that regards, it's it's a it's a leadership is a it's a balance you know of of bringing everyone up to that highest standard. Um, understanding as far as what your availability will be on the field as far as spring workouts. Yeah, um, as far as uh, pretty timelines are a little, you know, not set in stone. We're looking to be fully cleared somewhere in June, and whatever that means, you know, we haven't decided a timeline as far as uh, you know when I'm going to be practicing or or seeing the field again. But um, you know, we're it's moving great. We're ahead of schedule. Great progress is coming forward. You know, all the results have been fantastic, and I'm excited to to keep progressing towards being fully healthy. No hiccups in the physical or anything. No, like we've been great. It's been it's just steady, steady forward progress the whole way. Hey, Matt, piggybacking on Jordan's earlier question, I understand there may have been some teams that even offered you a little more money than these guys. What specifically really was the draw here? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going back to what I said, just the, like I said, the, the continuity, the winning, the, the culture, that culture is a big deal. And, and, and uh, I mean, Carolina's got it. You know, they've always been a team that I think people have always respected. And, you know, since, since I've been in the league and that it's a team that you're going to get their best shot. They work hard. They're, they're tough. They're smart. I mean, that's, that's a pretty cool thing to be a part of. 
to go back uh, to the, the hip surgery. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like for you? And, and I, as I understand it, even with that, you did not miss a, an offensive snap yep. until you broke your, your leg. Yep. Yeah, so that was a problem that had bothered me since college. Um, it's just a kind of a weird injury. And, and for most guys, you just kind of tough it out as long as you can. And that was when I had those surgery, that was the pretty much that was as much as I could tough it out. And then had the surgeries and, and you know, we staggered them five weeks apart and, you know, had to miss all off season, but they cleared me, I believe at the end of June and, and uh, was able to ease back in. And by week one of the regular season, I was full go. I, I think that I had some like, obviously I hadn't worked out all, as much all off season. So I wasn't in the playing shape that I normally am in, but was able to work into that and, and uh, play that whole season. Just to, to piggyback on that, do you feel that that is kind of a body of proof as you think about the season ahead, mm -hmm. being able to come back and play, obviously different injuries, yeah. but uh, that that season, that 2017 season, your body of proof to where you think you will be and want to be yeah. in 2019? Absolutely. And I think that, honest, this injury is, I think it's a little more clear cut. You know, it's a broken bone. It's not that, that hip deal, is, it's a little bit more finicky. In, in my opinion, the, the broken bone is um, is pretty clear cut as far as, you know, you know the bone's got to heal and then these, you got to build that strength. And once your strength is good, you know, things improve quickly. So I'm pretty, um, very optimistic. Matt, um, how important is the chemistry between a center and his quarterback? That's uh, very important. You know, they got to be on the same page in all of regards. There has to be a lot of trust there. And, and I'm looking forward to developing that. Have you spoken with Cam at all yet? No, not, not as of yet. Who was the first Panther-related text you received? Uh, Christian McCaffrey reached out, and and uh, and then a couple other guys. Lorenzo Doss I played with in Denver, so know him, and a couple other guys. Yeah. Did you have a relationship with Christian before? I I think I'd met him once or twice. You know, with him being out in in Colorado, um, and that like the off-season type stuff. But um, that was real brief. What are your memories of Super Bowl 50, and was that were you up against Cake Short most of that game, or did you see Keekly much? Mostly uh, Star Lotulele, um, and then I saw Keekly quite a bit too. Um, yeah, I mean that was how many years? Three years ago now. Three years ago. Um, I'm looking forward to, to getting back again with the Panthers. So. Um, obviously, you know a lot about the last guy, about Ryan Khalil. Mm -hmm. um, off the field, he was in, interested in a lot of different things. What are some of your hobbies off the field, and what kinds of things do you like? Movies, music, books? Yeah, I, um, I didn't know as much about it. I'm learning more about his off the field kind of interests. But um, personally, I, I read. Um, I watch some movies. I watch some TV. I like to hunt and fish. Um, but mainly kind of football takes over most. and. And uh, I mean, two of the last, or uh, I'm you know rehabbing this off season. I don't have time to do a lot of that stuff, so that's kind of been my focus. It's a big Game of Thrones locker room. Locker yeah. Room. Are you a Game yeah, of Thrones? Oh yeah, I'm I'm into Game of Thrones. Absolutely. What house would you be in? Oh gosh, now I see. I haven't thought about that question. I have to think about it. Matt, obviously being an Idaho guy and going to Boise State, and then you weren't too far from home mm -hmm. in Denver. Do you look forward to kind of a? Um, it's kind of a fresh start and a change to come where somewhere kind of completely different um, yeah. at this point in your career. It's going to be an exciting experience. Yeah, I've came to the realization that I've never lived out of the mountain time zone for really like any serious amount of time. So I'm excited to get over here. We've heard nothing but amazing things about Charlotte and, and excited to be here and experience this side of the country. You have memories of eight man football back in the day? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a different game, pretty high scoring. Um, was, uh, I think I only came off the field for kickoff, and I was on every other facet of the game. Um, I think my senior year we had like 18 or 19 kids on the team. That's and that's freshman through senior. That's not just varsity. Um, but it's, I mean, it's a fun game. It's different. It's a completely different game. Just like the CFL is different than the NFL and all those different ones. But it's it's a uh, pretty interesting. I, mean, I played positions. guard and, and defensive tackle, and I did a little bit of long snapping. But in eight man, you don't actually kick field goals, so you just go for two every time. <laughs> Anything else for Matt? Do you 
Uh, do you have any connections here? You know, you mentioned Christian. Do you know Matt's go at all or anybody else? Um, I met him just then and just met him and uh, but not really. I haven't met uh, I didn't know a lot of guys previously. When when you were kind of weighing this decision, was there anyone you reached out to to kind of confirm what you thought about the culture and so forth? Um, I've I was real close with uh, former player Richie Brockle. I don't know if you guys remember him, but he's a Boise State guy. We worked out together a, a lot of the off seasons when we were both in the when we were both playing, and so I'm pretty close with him. And and uh, he was able to. And I, I mean, I've I've known that going back to when he was still playing because he always spoke very highly of of Carolina and loves it here, and and uh, still loves it here. Thank you, guys. Matt, thank you. Yep. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yep. The annexation of Puerto Rico.